Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, The Bistro, where we will discuss today's hottest consumer trends, predict the future with consumer experts, and learn how elite businesses and entrepreneurs continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Hello and welcome to The Bistro. Filling in this week for Elaine Espinola on The Bistro, I'm Will Johnson. We are closing in on a new school year, and as parents and kids gear up for homework, new friends, new teachers, and in many cases, new schools, we're talking to the National PTA about how they are partnering with parents to get more involved and support their children in the new year, a really important task and goal. I'd like to welcome National PTA President Jim Accomando. Jim, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thank you. Let's begin. First of all, tell us a little bit about the National PTA. Most parents are familiar with their local PTAs and being asked for donations and volunteer, right? Uh, But how does the National PTA partner and work on the local level? That's a great question. And National PTA primarily develops programs and resources that local and state PTAs across the country use to affect change and support their local communities. So think of National PTA as kind of an umbrella organization that actually uh, oversees and assists um, from a program standpoint, a resource standpoint, uh, many of the things that take place in your local elementary, middle, and high school. We also empower families to speak up, and I'd say that's providing the voice in PTA, the advocacy piece of this piece of it, to speak up for their children, and in fact, not just their children, but all children. So where you on the local level, you'd speak up at your school board, uh, local and state government, and of course at national, right here in Washington, D.C. But take it a step back in the sense of anything that goes on in your, let's say, elementary school, somebody who's just starting out at, at the PTA level. And I started out when my son actually went to kindergarten. So when I went to, um, literally walked into the classroom that first day, and and uh, read the class a story, I was providing a voice, if you will, to my child. And little did I know, I never used the word, ad- I was advocating for them, didn't even know what that term really meant. But I was there to represent my child's issues, I was there to oversee, I was there to enhance his education ability, his, his education experience, if you will. And with that, eventually it, it catches on. Um, there's more that you actually can do. I found myself actually going to school board meetings uh, when budgets were being discussed, when textbooks were being decided on, you just raise your hand and you volunteer. And they said, okay, I'll be on that textbook committee. I'll, be, uh, I'll make sure that we have enough um, equipment and infrastructure and playground um, and resources, if you will, for each school. So really, it provides you uh, the opportunity of a voice. It's interesting you, you say that. I, you, being involved with my, my own child and, and his school, you... you um, it's easy enough to ignore the emails and requests mm-hmm. for for different you know various kinds of involvement, and so to take that extra step and reach out or show up and you know go to recess or do the different things that you're asked to do, can, can make a big difference. So that leads into my next question: When parents are more involved, what are the primary tangible benefits to schools, teachers, and their children? You use the phrase "show up," and that is that is so impactful. Uh, we use the term family engagement. So matter, no matter what level you engage in with your child, it makes a difference for not just your child, um, but for all children at that school and the school district as well. So students whose families are involved and attend sc- they attend school more regularly, they earn better grades, they enroll in higher level programs and have definitely higher graduation rates. So by being engaged as a parent, uh, as a parent you just make a difference in your child's educational experience, but not just your child, for, for everyone. And, it, and again, what might fear be a little bit fearsome for some folks is that, you know, the PTA has reached out to me. I really don't have time. I, I commute into, you know, a city locally. Right. Um, sure. I'm never home, et cetera. Parents are busy. It, parents are busy, exactly. And yeah. In fact, more busy probably now than, than ever. Um, sometimes just your membership support works in the sense of, you know, the fin- financial contribution. Other times, just um, your voice, if you have an opportunity to attend uh, a school board meeting or go down to town hall to fight for a budget issue, sometimes that works. Being able to come in um, on a Saturday to actually on a work project to maybe help beautify the grounds or um, to, um, to make improvements to the school that the PTAs usually do in the sense of just either beautification or enhancements, et cetera. Um, anything you'll find out is the little things count just as much as the great things. So. And it's one of the, it seems like one of those things that 
you know, I can't, I'm not speaking for a lot of people, but if you can build it into your life, it, it, it might just become part of your regular pattern, your weekly flow, your monthly flow to go to a meeting once a month or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden you're, like you say, showing up. I, um, I equate it to, um, I've got a lot of friends who love going to concerts and they're such concert goers. They, uh, it's a real treat when they actually can get a backstage pass and go. Right. I look at the membership into the PTA as a backstage pass to my child's education. It provides me a ticket to enter into the school, an opportunity to be in the classroom, an opportunity to actually be there for all enrichments, um, some field trips if I, if I have the time and, and the opportunity to go into. But I can follow my child from kindergarten through the 12th grade as closely or from a distance um, as possible. I can be there to advocate for them at all levels, at the local level, state level, district level, even national level for me right now. And there's no other membership that gives you that power, that opportunity. And if you are maybe interested in an actual position on the PTA, that, again, might be something you, that you might be anxious about the time involved. You could always talk to someone else who's, who's done one of those roles and see what the time involved is and if you could build it into your life. In fact, the joke is just don't show up for a meeting and you'll find out that you've been elected to something. <laughs> so I think, the- <laughs> I think I have firsthand experience with that. Uh, but it wasn't for, for treasurer. It was uh, hosting like the Geo Bowl or something. But there you go. At any rate, uh, as the new school year begins, what, what is the National PTA doing to help connect parents with schools and teachers, uh, and also how can parents really be proactive about working with their school PTAs? I mean, showing up is is what we've talked about primarily. Exactly. Um, For many kids, summer's over. August 1st was kind of the start date. I know, I know. My my (laughs) wife's a second grade teacher. She actually said to me over the weekend, she said, July is the Saturday of the weekend. And August is, is the, the Sunday. Sun. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my gosh, that hit me hard. <laughs> Especially if you're going back <laughs> exactly. in August. We don't exactly. go back until after Labor Day now. Here oh, well, in, see, in, in then Maryland. you're still on Saturday. I, you're I, still you're experiencing a double Saturday, so good for you. Thank you. Um, but for many kids, uh, it is, it's, it's Sunday. In fact, it's, it's Monday. It's back to school day. Uh, we don't start in Connecticut until um, a couple days before Labor Day weekend and some schools even um, after Labor Day, as you mentioned. But National PTA is designated September 20, uh, 17th to 21 is back to school week. Again, so we'll all be back by then. We'll all, yeah, right. We will all be back by then. Right. Um, and uh, we just did a podcast of our own just yesterday to welcome the kids back, et cetera. But we've got a lot of resources, and that's probably what PTA excels at or National PTA excels at. So if you went onto our website, pta.org, you'll find all kinds of toolkits and guides. And we actually have an amazing parent's guide to student success. We have family guides. We have a magazine that's um, – prints as well as uh, online called Our Children Magazine. But we encourage mostly the parents and teachers to visit our website. Remember PTA, Parent Teacher Association. PTA.org. You got it. PTA.org. All right. And some social media presence, I imagine, as well. Oh, my gosh. We encourage families, especially during back to school week, but all throughout the year, to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, Pinterest. um, And we actually have a one voice blog. Okay. And once again, outside of getting involved with the the PTA and support teachers, anything else you can mention the parents can do? I mean, we've talked a fair amount about that now. Um, Just virtually stay engaged and whatever engagement means to you, uh, quite frankly. If there is an issue um, that you've read about, um, hear about, find out on social media, we provide you a platform for your voice to be heard. I don't know another association that provides that. Uh, you can plug and play, literally just show up, get engaged, get engaged at any level, at the local level, at the county. There's so many county governments throughout our country, but at the county government level, at the state level, and of course, national level, uh, we're an open door. We're not, we're not a closed association. So you can virtually plug and play at any different level at any different time, moving up and down the association. Um, your membership is that powerful. So now without joining, you really don't have that voice or that platform. So it's, uh, it's, it's a few dollars in, in many cases, and it goes from there. That's our starting point. Each state, each school offers a different entry point. Some use it as a little bit of a fundraiser, others just at bare bones cost. Um, but for virtually this, the price of a good cup of coffee, you're in the PTA. All right. Let's shift uh, a little bit towards more serious issues, challenges that schools are currently facing and how the national PTA is addressing those challenges. Uh, what, what are they and, and how are they being addressed? 
they're being addressed head on, which is which is great. Um, of course, uh, some move at glacial pace, uh, so, as, which as is with the, all as with large all, organizations, exactly. Um, and our, but our advocacy efforts, um, we're we're very diligent. Um, so we stay focused on advocating to ensure children are kept safe, and that's safe from all violence. Um, not, not in particular, uh, we really focus on all violence. Have access to nutritious foods in schools. That was one of our founding, you know, um, nutritious meals. Receive a well-rounded education with access to the arts um, and cultural opportunities. We want to make sure that kids are either college or career ready upon graduation from high school. Again, family engagement we talked about. Uh, they earn better grades and higher graduation rates, which is key. They have to be in the game to play. And also, um, National PTA is focused on advocating for increased investments in public education and family engagement activities. So what you hear a lot, the, the resonant theme throughout this, is that we are here to provide a voice to all people, all parents, and, uh, and all teachers um, to advocate on behalf of the children to enhance their uh, educational experience, if you will. Um, we had just talked briefly before this podcast about um, STEM initiatives. Yep. And so we have a program that's called Take Your Family to School Week. We have a School of Excellence. We're literally a record number of um, winners, just shy of 300 this year, where the schools uh, can boast um, the benefits of this for two years and, and longer. And this is where they pull their families and actually determine what is a need that's unique to my school that I want to focus on. Mm-hmm. Uh, many will do um, uh, bullying, if you will, you know, some sort of uh, issues there, or maybe some educational enhancement um, or nutrition or wellness or something. But whatever they flag, uh, we support them financially for that and recognize them for their abilities. Um, we also have that STEM plus families, empower families to engage in the child's education. We'll have math nights. I've gone to several schools in my um, home state of Connecticut that have actually had math nights where literally, if you can imagine, you know, when you think about it and you go, okay, you know, a lot of people will attend, you know, a sports night. They'll go to a basketball game, a football game, et cetera. But a math night, and you'll see the lines out the door. Hundreds and hundreds of people That's really come cool. in. It's yeah. really, really cool. Do you have any to see idea, folks that show up for that? Like the number? Do you, do you have any idea, like the number of PTAs across yeah. the country? Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Hate in to fact, ask you that off, but it sounds no, like no. you know. Uh, Twenty four thousand right. thereabouts local PTA units nationwide. Uh, we're in all fifty states, and what we call them is congresses. So we have fifty four congresses. Okay, and so that includes um, all our European DoDEA schools, Department of Defense education wow. um, areas. I mean, it's such a yep. huge, diverse. Oh, it's amazing! I mean, and, it's and amazing. It must vary so much from congress or school or pta to pta in terms of what issues they're dealing with and it how does. well they're dealing with it and we've got very large states um in the sense of you could just you know imagine them they're california texas florida if you will we've got very petite states like vermont new hampshire etc so where, where we are overcrowding seems to be an issue schools that are crowded Schools are the crowd that's tough. Um, yep. So you've got resource <laughs> that's constraints. That's another topic. Another but. topic, but you've got resource constraints all over the place yep. in the sense yep. of um, fighting for space in classrooms. Um, one of the things you really want to make sure is, and when people look at colleges, right, they look at, okay, what's my professor to student class size, ratio? Right. Exactly, class size. Is, is my son or daughter being taught um, in a lecture hall or in a classroom? So. It's really important to have um, the smaller class size, the better, because you need to have that individualized education as much as possible. Yeah. But um, you know, so many times you you walk into these schools, and in any environment, it's not just you can't just cherry pick. Okay, it's it's definitely this environment over that one, but it could happen in any school district. It happens when there is all these disasters, and so think about the hurricanes that we yeah. just had that that devastated so many states. Well, that had nothing to do with um, budget, but you have got to actually double up in chairs, double up in classrooms for t- for a while while your school is being reopened. Unexpectedly, right? Unexpectedly, yeah. ex- et cetera. So the, the plight down in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands was so many kids being sent up to, to relatives, especially in the state of Florida, impacted us in Connecticut, but definitely in the state of Florida. That's an overnight influx. Where are those kids going to go? And they're doubling up in classrooms. Well, we we have gone off on a, on a, on a bit of a tangent there, but... <laughs> Let me ask you uh, to wrap up on a positive note, and not that actually those aren't positive scenarios where schools are stepping up mm-hmm. and teachers are Absolutely stepping up and doing, stepping up. doing amazing work to to introduce kids from other school districts and environments where their plight is difficult. Uh, over the past five to ten years, briefly, if you can, how can you tell us how 
um, positive changes, what positive changes you've seen, and how parent involvement has helped drive some of those changes. Parent involvement, parent engagement has been um, hand in hand uh, with government and trying and municipalities trying to correct a lot of issues and, and make a more positive environment. Um, higher academic standards. We definitely raise the bar and help and improve students' ability to think critically, especially today. Students are using technology a lot more to research subjects, connect people, places around the world. They've got skills that have just most recently developed. Um, they're much more competitive. They thrive in that competitive environment. Technology is really, really, really improving our communication ability. Um, it's actually connecting uh, families and schools a lot better in the sense of the internet and um, through technological devices. Um, healthier school environments, my gosh, from the facilities being a lot healthier now and us plugging into in the sense of um, what sort of uh, chemicals we use from a cleaning standpoint, whether con yeah. construction methods, et cetera. To lunches. To our healthy foods, yeah. exactly, to our healthy foods. So parents have played an important role in advocating, and that's, again, the buzzword, advocating and collaborating and partnering with municipalities and school districts as well as our legislative bodies um, at all levels to implement these and other changes. Thank you, Jim. That's that's a lot, and uh, we leave our <laughs> listeners with that. It, of course, parents can connect and engage with their their school PTA, but if they'd like to learn more about the National PTA, PTA.org. I'd like to thank National PTA President Jim Accomando for joining us today. Thanks again. Thank you. And once again, for Elaine Espinola and the Bistro, I'm Will Johnson. You just enjoyed the Bistro podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com. And subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service. 